Did you wake up with some really bad neck pain to the point where you can't really look around or move it at all? Well, you might have crick in the neck. We'll talk about that in today's video. Keep watching. So what is crick in the neck? Now, crick in the neck is just a slang term used for neck pain from sleeping weird. And this could be actually generated by a few different structures. So some of the common structures that could be causing your neck pain are the cervical facet joints here. So sometimes when you're compressing them through weird sleeping positioning for a long period of time, it could cause pain in the morning. Another issue is called a cervical meniscoid where a piece of the joint capsule gets stuck into the joint itself and it pinches that structure which is very pain sensitive and so that could cause some pain as well the last cause is myofascial base pain so myofascial spasm particularly in the levator scapulae or the upper trapezius muscle now either way regardless of what's actually causing the pain the early stage of rehab is going to be pretty similar and what we're really going to focus on is increasing that range of motion uh, whatever you got going on and activating some muscles there so that we could promote better recovery. But before we get into that, we're going to first talk about how long does this issue typically last for. Now, the natural history, which is if you just wait and do nothing and don't get mistreated, it can last for about a month, sometimes a little longer, give or take a week or two, depending on who you are as a person. For most people, when it comes to recovering while doing some rehabilitative exercises, you can often cut that recovery time in half or to a quarter. So a lot of people, when they start doing some movements in the neck, things start to feel better at least after a week or a week and a half with full resolution of symptoms often being felt in the two or three week mark when you're doing these exercises. And that could be quite important for a lot of you because as you can tell, if you have a crick in the neck, it really prevents you from doing a lot of different daily activities. You can't really drive well, you can't really do any of your work well. It, it really affects the whole entire day. You don't even sleep well due to the pain. So today we're going to start with some early phase rehab and what you can do at home using minimal amount of equipment. All right, so the first thing we're going to take advantage of is using something like a massage ball. You could pick one of these up for less than 10 bucks online, or you could just walk into your local sporting goods store or like a winner's and pick one up for about five bucks. An alternative to a massage ball is a lacrosse ball. You could even try to use a tennis ball, but for most people, the tennis ball won't be dense enough for you to get an effective feel for this. If you don't have this ball, don't worry. We're gonna give you some other exercise options later on in this video. You could just skip ahead if that's the case. Two of the things that we're going to use to target is the upper trapezius and levator scapulae muscle because if those muscles are in spasm then giving it a bit of self massage will do wonders in terms of letting it chill out so that you can start moving your neck again so the first exercise we're going to be doing we're going to just be placing this on the back of your neck along the muscle belly that's affected for today's video i'm going to do all the exercises on the right side imagining that i injured my right side of my neck when you're placing this ball on the back of your neck you got to make sure you're not placing it on the bony structures so when you place your hand on the back of your neck if you're watching this video you kind of feel these bones kind of sticking out. That's your spinous process. So we're not going to put the ball directly on the metal here. We're going to kind of go just adjacent to it to the right hand side when that's where the muscular tissue is. So we're going to put that ball on the right side. This is the bone right here where my middle finger is. This is the ball right next to it. From there, we're actually going to lie down on our back. So we're going to go lie down face up and you're going to notice that my neck is going to be in a bit of extension with my chin pointing up to the ceiling. So from here, you won't feel too much of a compression onto that muscle in your neck, but you can do a light chin tuck. So you're going to give yourself a chin tuck a bit, almost like you're trying to do a double chin, only as far as you can tolerate and you will feel compression of those muscles. Now, if this causes referral pain into your head or causes a headache, you kind of hit the jackpot with where you want to target this type of massage. If you don't, that's also a good thing. That means you're not as sensitive as other people. But we're going to hold this position for about 30 seconds. And I really want to make sure you're timing this because you can actually make things feel worse if you go and over massage this muscle. So right now we're just going to hold it for up to 30 seconds, 20 seconds at a minimum. So make sure you get a stopwatch. And then after about 30 seconds or so, you're just going to move that ball an inch down your neck. So I'm going to move it down a little bit more and I'm going to do the same thing. Tuck my chin in, compressing that ball and I'm going to feel a nice little compression onto that muscle. When you're doing this exercise, it's really important that you're thinking about how intense it feels. You don't want to pulverize the muscle here, okay? We're only going to aim for about a four to six out of 10 massage intensity. So if it hurts more than that, back off because you might be aggravating things or resensitizing your structures more than necessary. We're going to do one more spot, one more inch down, and then we're going to do it one more time. So 
Because we're doing about 30 seconds each spot, this whole thing should only take about a minute and a half, two minutes if you decide to go for a fourth spot. And you only need to do this once daily. If you do it multiple times, you might be over massaging. After about 30 seconds, we're going to go to our second point. We're going to target the upper trapezius muscle and levator scapulae at the shoulder junction. And this is because this muscle, although it's a head and neck muscle, they attach down to your scapula or your shoulder blade. So from here, if you actually feel the bulk of your belly, you're just gonna put it right behind there. And then you're gonna have your hand rested on the floor. Now at this point with my hand rested here, it shouldn't feel too intense. If it does, great, just stay there. If it doesn't, we're going to do a little bit of movement here. You're gonna take your right hand, you're going to raise it up in front of you and you might feel some compression and if that's reaching that six out of 10 intensity, you just go and come back down and then raise your arm up to that same point. If you still haven't reached that point yet, you can keep going all the way until you hit the floor. All right, so here for me, since I have a healthy muscle, this at this point, it feels like a six out of 10 intensity. And then I'm just going to bring all the way back down. So we're mobilizing the tissue through movement while sustaining the same compression. So I'm not rolling around because often in my experience, rolling around a ball on a, on a spasming muscle just makes it spasm even more. You wanna be able to just get the muscle to relax under the pressure and then you're going to be moving your arm to mobilize the tissue instead. So it's kind of deconstructing the same goal that you're trying to achieve. And for this, we'll be doing about six repetitions or a 30 second hold in total going back and forth nice and rhythmically, nice and slow, don't rush through this movement. Because again, the goal isn't to pulverize the muscles, it's just to relax the tissue, maybe improve some blood flow, desensitize some pain here. And we're going to just be doing two more. Now, even with this top rep range, if you can only go like three quarters of the way before it becomes too painful or intolerable, then just do that and then come back down, that's fine to do. Okay, and we're only going to do one set. You could do a second set if you move the ball to another position. So we don't want to be massaging the same point multiple times. You're going to move the ball an inch towards your shoulder or outwards, and then you can repeat the same thing about six times or as you can tolerate. Now, as I mentioned, for both of these exercises, you don't want to be doing too much massage. You can avoid over massaging yourself if you just don't repeat the same point. So that's why with the first exercise where we're massaging the muscles at the back of your neck, I like to just go in one direction. I start at the base of the neck and then I just slowly move down the neck. This will prevent me from repeating a spot. If you kind of just move it all over the place, then you might land on the same spot and you risk kind of making things feel a little bit more sensitive by overdoing it. All right, so the next set of exercises that we'll be doing are going to be isometric cervical contractions. And this is so that we can start engaging some of the muscles around your head and neck and shoulders as well, so that you can actually stimulate a little bit better recovery. The additional benefit of doing isometric exercises is that it actually does act as an analgesic, which means it does help with pain control as well. With isometric exercises, you could do it multiple times throughout the day, especially if you find that it helps with your symptom relief. While the massage exercises, you really want to limit that to just once a day, isometrics, you could go as much as you can as long as it doesn't make things feel worse. So these exercises are super simple and you don't really need any equipment at all. You just need to use your hand as a form of resistance. So from here, you're gonna sit up nice and tall, chin in neutral. So you wanna make sure your head is not jetted forward. You're going to kind of go into a neutral position. You don't need to be completely chin tucked either, just neutral. Slight chin tuck might be recommended. And then you're going to take the same sided arm. So I'm, if my injury is on my right side of my neck, I'm going to take my right hand and I'm going to place it on the side of my head. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push my hand into my head and my head into my hand. And this is going to cause the muscles on the side of my neck to contract. And we're going to hold this contraction for up to 10 seconds. So right now I'm pushing my head and hand into each other. And I'm going to push as hard as I can tolerate. So for this exercise, I want it to be pain free. So right now, I'm not feeling any pain. I'm gonna push as hard as I can. Now, I could go for pretty maximal effort right now because I'm not injured. But for you, you might notice that you can only do a 20% contraction or even like a 50% contraction. But you should notice that as the time goes on in terms of days and weeks, you will be able to push it a little bit harder and harder each time. So right now I'm gonna be holding that for about 10 seconds and then I'm gonna rest for 10 seconds. We're going to do a one-to-one -one work to rest ratio and I'm gonna do about six repetitions. Okay, now you could do about two sets of this with about a minute of rest in between sets. I like to just kind of do the other side while I'm resting because if we're doing five to six repetitions, that'll be about a minute of work and then we do the other side. So next we're going to go into extension as well. So I'm gonna place my hands behind my head 
And once again, I'm gonna be pushing my hands forwards. I'm gonna be pushing my head backward into my hand. And we're just holding in that position. So I'm not gonna be moving with these exercises. So there is no winning with my hands or winning with my head. I'm just maintaining that position, resisting as much as I can. So once again, neck nice and neutral, pushing my hands forwards, head backwards. And I'm gonna hold that for up to 10 seconds. And I'm pushing as hard as I can tolerate and then I rest and I'm going to be resting for another 10 seconds. So just so you know, I'm going to do another repetition here, pushing back and then pushing forwards and then relaxing one more time. So from the side, my hands are right here and I'm pushing back, making sure my neck is as neutral as possible and then going forwards, relax one more time, pushing back, holding for up to 10 seconds and relax. All right, so those are two of your cervical isometric contraction exercises. They're also stabilization exercises. So they really help with a lot of different type of neck pain, whether it be facet joint related, the meniscoid, as I mentioned, or if it's a myospasm of the muscles of your head and neck, then these exercises can't help you recover from your injury. Next, we're going to just be doing an exercise to start mobilizing some of the joints of your cervical spine and a bit of your thoracic spine as well. All right, so this exercise is called, I like to call the Sphinx Cat Camel for just because it, for me, it resembles a sphinx. But you're going to get a nice padded yoga mat, place it on the ground. You can sit onto your heels, your feet could be flat or up on your toes, whatever is more comfortable for you. For me, flat is a little bit nicer. From here, I'm going to place my hands right in front of my knees, making sure my hips are on my heels. For this exercise, you can also just do this on your sofa or like your couch or bed. As long as you have that padded surface, it doesn't really matter how stable it is. So from here, we're just going to do a, that modified cat camel. So first we're going to spread our shoulder blades out, flex that thoracic spine, and then I'm going to look down all the way with my head. And then from this position, I'm going to look up, extend my upper back and my neck. Now chances are you're not going to have full range with this exercise, especially if you're in the acute phase of healing. Go down and then coming back up. But that's okay, what you wanna do is just move as far as you can. So if you only have half the range or even less, let's say you only have quarter range, then just doing a nice light move in back and forth is gonna be super helpful. The reason why this helps is that if you have a cervical facet joint irritation, one of the best things that you can do for recovery is just to oscillate the joints in your neck and upper back through gentle movements. And what this does, it helps to circulate joint fluid or synovial fluid, which delivers the nutrition necessary for that joint to recover. So whatever you got, use it. And then what you'll notice is that on a daily basis or even throughout the day or on a weekly basis, you should notice that you could go deeper and deeper into your end ranges. All right, so that wraps up our video on the crick in the neck type of injury. If you have any questions or if you notice that the pain actually persists for longer than a four to six week period, please consult your healthcare practitioner. You wanna book in with your chiropractor or, or physiotherapist. If you're looking for one in the Markham or Toronto region, you could come visit us at Rehab Hero. We could definitely help you out with these types of issues. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you all next time. Peace.